Hey there, this is Drac back, and today we're playing Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries with the Thrustmaster. The Thrustmaster comes with a thrust module, it comes with a joystick, and a ton of buttons on it. I did not get the pedals because the pedals double the price of this thing. It would have just added two buttons that are already here. If you can see, there's two little rudders, and that'll move my legs left and right. So right, left... And forward and backwards moves me forward and backwards, so it's kind of like, you know, we're piloting a little mech. Or a big mech, actually. So let's go ahead and start a single player game. This is going to be the campaign with all the DLC. The game is not worth playing in its vanilla state without the DLC. It's a fun game, but it is kind of lacking in a lot of places, so let's go ahead and get a new campaign going. And yeah, we will play the tutorial so you guys can see what it's like to play with this little baby. In 2108, humanity began colonizing the stars. Their reach would eventually span a vast region of space known as the Inner Sphere. During its golden age, under the governance of the Star League, the Inner Sphere experienced unprecedented peace, prosperity, and technological advancement. But with a great rise comes a great fall. Beset by greed and mistrust, humanity splintered. The Star League crumpled. Technological advancement slowed. The great houses, each vying for supremacy, turned on one another engaging in a series of conflicts known as the Succession Wars. Amidst this chaos, mercenaries became the proxy forces for the Great Houses. Numerous battlefields sprung up across the Inner Sphere, dominated by hulking war machines known as Battle Max. The year is now 3015, and these steel behemoths have become the tools of the mercenaries' trade. It's a lucrative time, yet one beset with perils of all kinds. Only the most skilled and brave among them will rise to become legend. Okay, so basically the story is, in the future, humanity fights each other with big battle mechs. Cool. You know what? I, I think I can get down with that. You know what I mean? Captain Merton, please report to the hangar for testing. The Centurion is waiting for you. Alright, now I can control the human with the Thrust Master. Check it out. See? I like to call this the Meat Mech. I can go anywhere I want. There's some really good detail in this, but this room never gets used outside the tutorial, and it's kind of a shame. Like, look at all this shit that they did. There's like a PDA here, there's some like, what is that? Hang on, can I get a seat? Auto spray paint, yep. Don't know what that is, don't care. Ah, oh, look, there's like computers and Okay, okay. I played this game a lot before, so I'm really kind of taking in the details. Yeah, it's a nice presentation, but let's see what we got. So he's driving in a Victor. A Victor, I think, is an assault mech. And he's like a tougher version of the mech we're going to be driving, which is the Centurion, which is over there. There's a broken down Shadowhawk right there. I'm assume, I assume it's being repaired right now. Looks like the gate's open. Yeah, we get to be in a little planetary hangar. 
The Centurion is a medium mech. And that means it's not the biggest, but I mean, look how big that is. Come on. It's really cool looking. It has, like, especially the helmet design, too. It is like a, I guess, a Roman Centurion, right? Hence the name. It would be tedious, but I wish every time you got in your battle mech for battle, you would get lifted up to this platform and maybe even hop into it. But they'd have to have a lot of resources right, to do so that. Fahad wants us to run the Centurion through its paces to see how it does. He spent months getting it operational again after we recovered it from that ruined factory on Ramen 2. What a bloody shit all that place was. Ramen 2? Absolutely nothing explodes during the test, mate. I'm pretty confident you won't make Yeah, look at that. So in the game, they actually do. So it's joystick here. Not the same model, but you know what I mean? I think. And there is a little thrust master there. Little thruster. So let's go ahead and power it up. If I remember correctly, it's one of these buttons. There we go. I have one of the buttons bound on my joystick. Yeah, bring up the systems now. Okay, armor and structure display up. Weapon systems up. Tactical display up. Everything looks good to go. Keep in mind there's parts on that mech that are at least 200 years old. So ease it forward slowly, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I will have to and mess with something real quick, so I'll be right back. Okay, it's working. I just... It's kind of a thing in this game where you need to toggle what your weapon groupings do. So I just wanted to have access to it. I personally like having my M lasers. Well, hmm. Okay, they can be where they are. It's actually pretty alright. So each of these weapon groups, they're assigned to a specific button on my Thrustmaster. So, I will have to choose which ones I'm comfortable using. So, first we're going to accelerate. So let's thrust forward. Ooh, okay. Let me show this off real quick. So as I move it forward, he moves it forward too! I personally think that's great. Look at her go, right? That's my girl. She's a beauty, isn't she? Certainly is. I can also okay. highlight friendly okay. units by turning right on the throttle hat. So we can see that's a Victor, and his front and right torso are heavily damaged in the armor, which is weird. Don't know what that's about. Nice work. Now revert to your drone cam. Right, this is their in-lore explanation as for third person. Let's go ahead and do a left-right <laughs> rotation test. All right, we're gonna turn left. Oh, I guess our legs. Okay, now let's make sure the torso is working properly. And now we look left and right. Directions. Look at that. Good. As you can see, the torso rotates independently from the legs. Your direction of movement, therefore, may differ from the direction you're actually looking. If you check your tack screen, you can see your current leg orientation is represented by the dotted line, and your torso orientation is represented by the cone. Looking good. The mobility course is next. All right, I'm going to switch it back Show to first person because I like the immersion aspect about it. Each of the waypoints. And so now if I turn the little paddles like you've seen before, it turns my legs. So let's go ahead and run the gauntlet. Yeah, the Centurion's a really good starting mech. He's sort of, he's heavily armored. He's got a diverse amount of arms, lasers, ballistics, missiles. He's a pretty good beginner mech. Centurion was made to have a good balance between speed and firepower. All we have to do now is find out if the weapon systems work. Oi, what do you mean if the weapons work? You know how long I spent stripping each one of those components and putting them back together again? They'll bloody well work, mate. <laughs> you heard the man. Let's go shoot some stuff. Follow me. You know, what wonderful bonder. I 
once slammed the hunchback I was piloting right into my instructor's javelin. Wait a minute. Oh, man. Are what those mechs crouching? Crashed? Come on, Demason. There's no crouching in this Go game, ahead. and they're all crouching. Thought you'd want to know that all Aw, that sucks. They even have the in-model crouching. So, in other Mech Warrior games, you can crouch, and you would do this for, like, taking cover, or, like, planting yourself in a lake. But they don't have it in this, or, like, Mech Warrior Online, for some reason. But they clearly got the in-game asset to do it. I don't know. That's a shame. Anyway, Dada is gonna take me to the shooting range so that I can shoot some bad things. So let's go. Unfortunately, they throttled my speed down to 39, and I don't know why. I can handle myself. There we go. Okay, it was because Dad needed to go first, I see. Weapon systems are now online, gents. Be gentle, hey. Always, my friend. Sometimes it's hard to know when you're going too far or too backward. Oh, did you? Well, what if I set it to weapon group two? Hmm? What are you going to do? Right, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I just want to prove my point. So check it out. Bam! <laughs> yeah! Oh, right. They actually won't continue me because I'm not pressing one or mouse button. There we go. Your ammo levels. Always remember to manage your reserves. You run out of shells in the middle of a firefight. It could be your last one. Lasers are mapped to weapon group two. Fire them when ready. Right. I can fire them till the cows come home on my thrustmaster, but the game won't register that I'm actually firing them. It's weird. But anyway. There. Does that not work? Good enough. All right. Those lasers generate <laughs> significant heat. You can see the temperature readout next to your armor and structure display. All weapons generate heat when fired. You overheat your mech during a firefight, and, and it could trigger a shutdown. So keep that in mind. Right. I'll explain all this now, a little later. Fun stuff. Long-range missiles are set to weapon group three. The target lock has been disabled for the moment, but never mind that. Just go ahead and fire at will. Bam. Well, as you can see, LRMs don't track unless you have a target lock on something. Yep, they're as dumb as a post yep. without it. Let's try targeting a drone first. And this time, before you fire your LRMs. It makes a hell of a difference having that target lock, doesn't it? Next step is to test moving and firing at the same time. I've set up a series of aerial targets for you. Move through the aerial combat course as quickly as you can and shoot the drones down. I'll meet up with you on the other side. Okay, I said earlier that Centurions are a good beginner mech, and that's because they have the three different types of weapons so that you can experiment with what you like. So ballistic weapons, like my AC-10, my Autocannon 10, they don't generate a lot of heat, and heat management's a big part of this game. They do take ammo, though, that's the thing. So you can actually run out of munitions during battle. Lasers don't take any ammo, unless they're chemical. However, they usually run really hot, so you can't fire them as often, otherwise you overheat. And then finally there's missiles, which work like ballistics, except sometimes they can be different. So my LRMs need a lock-on, and they can fire really far. But they can only fire far, that's the thing. It says I'm missing a target. Nope, okay, that's just further ahead. Target acquired. Target destroyed. Target destroyed. But yeah, there's a lot to think about when it comes to what firepower you have in this game. And also, if your mech gets its armor blown off, and there's ammo wherever you're storing it inside your mech, if that compartment gets destroyed, then an ammo explosion will occur. And that could damage your pilot, or it could damage your mech even further. And kill you. So, there is a balance. Target 
You could also make the lasers not burn you up so much by adding heat sinks. There's a lot to go over, so I'll just show it later on. It is harder to aim with this thing, like tracking. Now take up a position by the barricade. Okay, I projected three mechs, each with differing damage profiles. You should see them in the ravine below. Target the first one on your left. You can zoom in on the target for a more accurate shot if you need to. Targeting and telemetry seem to be working. Note the center torso on that first mech. It's reading heavily damaged. Destroying the CT will destroy the mech no matter its relative condition. Go ahead and destroy the center torso. Okay, yeah, so every time I target an enemy, not these two yet, but it always pops up on the top right and you can see what is damaged on it and what weapons it has and what the front and left look like. So I'm going to shoot this guy in the torso and kill him. I said I'm going to shoot this guy in the torso and fuck him. Come on. You're making fun of me. There we go. Second mech, both legs are heavily damaged. With one leg destroyed, mechs become easy targets. Both legs, <laughs> it's over for them. Take out both legs. Yeah, in Mech Warrior 5, you have to take out both legs. Destroying one doesn't really destroy it. But it makes them slow. They still have it. Nicely done. The cockpit on that third mech is seriously damaged. It's a difficult shot to make, especially in the chaos of battle. But the fastest way to take out a mech is to eliminate the pilot. Go ahead and try shooting the cockpit. Yep, it's a tiny, tiny target. There you go. Now we're almost done. The battle simulation I've set up for you is the last hurdle. Follow me. You're gonna go head to head with an urban mech. They're slow and poorly armored. Perfect for this particular test. Should be a piece of cake for a pilot like you. Sure, sure, Papa, whatever you say. But yeah, there's like a lot to this game. I really, really dig it. There he is, urban mech. He's got an AC-10, a small laser, and he's slow as ass from experience. He's actually not going to do any damage to me, I don't think, because it's a training simulation. But still, he must be a dead eye if he's hitting me like this. Oh yeah, also keep note, if I spin really fast like this and I shoot my laser, it's not shooting on the diamond, it's shooting on the cross. And that's because my lasers are in my torso. So there's two different types of aiming. There's arm aiming, which is more accurate because you can control it better, and there's torso aiming. Now if you say, like, have a mech that has all its weapons on the torso, you could just go into torso lock like this. So now both reticles are locked together, and the arm and torso shoot at the same place, but you get less movement uh, in terms of aiming. So if I unlock it, I can look all the way up here and all the way down here and even turn way farther than I should but if I torso lock I'm bound to only where my torso can aim which is very very small just a neat little detail there anyway let's stop getting crushed by this urban mech in fact I'm gonna go up to him and give him a love tap hey Let's head back. Alright, returning to base, daddy -o. When we get back to the base, we'll buy Fahad a few beers to say thanks. Yeah, of course we'll have to listen to him gripe about how rough we are on his battle mechs. Small price to pay, I suppose, for having one of the best mechanics in the entire inner sphere.
about the rendezvous point, but our contact isn't here. You see anyone, son? The salvage crates at the last checkpoint were empty. Now, something's up if they're missing payments. This is Commander Mason of Major Campbell. Make a note. Looks like someone is gonna need a lesson in paying their bills on time. That's odd. What the hell? I have a visual. It's plenty wide, sir. We are evacuating. We need to take what we have and go. The fastest way is across the swamp. Captain, where are you going? It's possible they left the cash at the last checkpoint in the city. Let's get the money and run, Commander. This is reckless. We need to get back to base. They're distracted with the invasion. We'll be in and out before they know we're here. Let's hope it's not us they're after. I don't like this, son. This is a ghost town. We're close. I can smell the sea bills. There's nothing here. Relax. We'll be out of here in no time. We're being tagged! Look out! Incoming airstrike! Offline is all. That was close. Return to base now. I am not leaving you behind. We were set up, and you're in no shape to fight. Meet me at the extraction point with the leopard. Go now, Captain. Damn it! On the move. Commander, an enemy dropship is approaching your position. Move now. I've got eyes on. Identified. Hunchback and King Crab. Uh, damn it! Rihanna, any idea what these guys want? I picked up some chatter about coordinates of some kind. That mean anything to you? Coordinates? No, Rihanna. Promise me you won't leave without Jake. Promise me. Commander, I promise.
Very emotional. Okay. So now we want revenge for Da Da dying. So that's what we're gonna do. And there's our goal. Revengeance is a good motivator, methinks. Commander, sorry to wake you, but our sitrep has changed. Head to the bridge as soon as possible. All right, and here is what we're going to get familiar with. We don't see this room a lot, but we can visit it anytime. Look at that. You can even see that's an accurate time reading of what currently it is right now. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, let's go talk to Riona. Hello. Commando, good to see you up. We haven't really had a chance to speak since your father was killed. Nope. I'm not much for sentimentality. Nope. But I worked with your father for a long time. He was a good man. Hell, he sacrificed his life to save ours. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen next, but whatever it is, I'd like to be part of it. Cool. I'd like to stay on as your ops commander. That is, if you'll have me. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Your family, Rihanna. Or as close as I have now. Besides, I'm gonna need you. Yes. I suspect you will. God, look at the setting. About I Citrep. It's not great. Shit news. looks really cool. Those bastards that came after us are in the process of setting up a blockade of the system. Which means we're going to be trapped here with a tightening noose around our necks unless we do something about it. Who are these guys? Another mercenary outfit by the looks of it. I don't know more than that at the moment. And these coordinates they were looking for? Not a clue, but we're going to find out. First things first, we need transport out of the system. That means a jump ship. I sent out a transmission right after the attack through the HBG. The message was for a longtime client of your father's and an old friend of mine. Name is Spears. He has powerful connections. I'm hoping he can help us out. Until I hear back from him, there's nothing we can do except lay low. In the meantime, Fahad wants to see you down in the hangar. The Centurion needs repairs and he wants to discuss them with you. I'll let you know when I hear back from Spears. Copy that. Okay, right. So Dada died from a mysterious mercenary outfit and we have codes that belong to Dada. And we're going to go visit a guy named Spears who knows what's going on. Meanwhile, we're going to go talk to Faha and see what he wants. Fahad, you son of a bitch. Hey, mate. Figured you'd want an update on the Jesus, Centurion. Jesus, look at that. Took a bloody beating back there, so fair warning. It's gonna be a while before she's operational again. Look when how polygonal his head is. With the light <laughs> back over in Bay 1 for now. She's a good girl. Won't let you down and treat her, right? I'll do my best. Yeah, heard that before. Anyways, you know the drill. Access the repair terminal here. Once you're done, I'll get started on the work, eh? Okay? He just came in from the PS1 world. He's one of the most high definition I've ever seen. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. So this is our Centurion. Look how big he is. Got really fucked up. You can notice little things like in the Mech Warrior world, they have little ligaments, like synthetic ligaments, and that's how they walk and stuff. They're like simulating muscles. It's pretty cool. But we can see from this panel, looks like his medium hand is out of commission, so we need to give him the repairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what to do. We know what to do. Right, audience? We know what to do. Okay, yeah, check this out. So, we can go to his loadout. So, in this screen, we can see all his weapons and himself on the surface. But, if we go under the hood in details, we can see every little thing that's wrong with him. We can see broken armor on his right arm, broken health for his right arm, which is what structure is. But, uh, we're going to click the repair all button. And as you can see, it's all fixed up, but it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of cash, which is displayed down here. It's going to take about half a million dollars to repair them, and it's going to take about a little over a month at 36 days. So let's get to work. And because we're in a conflict zone, which is sort of like a war zone, it's going to take more money and more days to repair them. But there's nothing we can do at the moment, so let's go ahead and get that worked up. Alright, and now it looks like we gotta go speak with Brianna again. We do have a second mech, and that's the Javelin. Is this a specific type of Javelin? The Javelin 10F. This is my favorite Javelin. As you can see on the chest there, he has four medium lasers. 
You can infinitely use those so long as you don't get, you know, shot at on those specific parts of his chest. Uh, but he's fast, and he can dish out a decent amount of damage and be a really good backstabber, especially in uh, MechWarrior Online. Hey, Commander. I've received a transmission from Spears in response to my request for help. Take a listen. Rihanna, I received your message. Oh, shit. It's a hollow vid. I'm sorry to hear about Nikolai. He was a, better a good view. man and an even better pilot. He'll be sorely missed. I assume his son will be taking over the operation. Nikolai was always bragging about the boy's skills. Well, I hope he was right. I've begun working on a plan to get you safe passage out of the system. And you polygonal too, take like Fahad. I expect you already know by now that whoever attacked you has set up a blockade to prevent your escape. It's a large system, though, so we can use that to our advantage. As soon as you receive this, I want you to proceed to the outermost planet in the system. It's little more than a hunk of ice with a few leftover mining operations on it. There's an abandoned power station there. Now, I've got it on good authority that local raiders are using it as a secret cache for their ill-gotten goods. I know you can use supplies and materials for your repairs. I expect you'll find what you need at that location. I've attached the exact coordinates to this message. Once I have a proper plan in place, I'll contact you again. For now, be safe. All right. Time to suit up, Commander. I've already input the coordinates. All I need is for you to sign off and get us there. Understood. Yeah, you got it. You got it, Rierner. Okay, so we're in a system called Dabari, and we need to go to an ice planet to take care of some local banditos. So let's view this transmission. She says, Okay, Commander. I'm going to drop us down well away from the target location. Then let you do your thing. The target is abandoned power plant. <laughs> we know the raiders have been using the area as a secret cache for whatever goods managed, they've managed to pilfer from various mining outfits. So with little luck, we'll be able to recover enough material to finish the repairs on the Leopard and the Centurion. These raiders may be a band of thieves, but don't underestimate them. They'll be motivated to protect their loot, and you can bet that they're well armed. Stay on point and watch your six, Commander. Good luck. So, well-armed, I don't know what that really means. You're going to see how well-armed they are, but let's do it. Contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the way contracts work is you take the contract, there's a potential payout, it's a faction against another faction, and you negotiate for stuff like salvage rights and payment and damage coverage for doing the job. Here's Spears. He says... I have it on good <laughs> I'm not going to use that voice. I have it on good authority that local raiders are using the abandoned power station as a secret cachet for their ill-gotten goods. I expect you'll find what you need for your repairs, but don't count on them just letting you walk out of there without a fight. Okay, sounds good. And since we're not really going to be getting much, I'm just going to go for the pay. So here we go. Yep, we're taking the javelin. Now before I go in, I can actually set the key bindings beforehand. So I know what I'm comfortable with. He has no weapons on any of his arms. He does have melee weapons, but they count for the torso for some reason. Who knows? Anyway, we're going to bind those to my favorite button, 4, which is on the right-hand side of my Thrustmaster. We're going to click Apply and get back in the fight. Ready up. This is a raid mission, so that means go to the place and destroy the specific object. So that's what we'll be doing. Ooh. Decent cockpit. I mean, it's like a javelin. What can you expect? The abandoned power station is located on the other side of the ridge. You should be able to make your way through the pass undetected. That javelin you're piloting is lightly armed, Commander. But what it lacks in firepower and armor, it makes up in speed and mobility. I'm sure you wish the Centurion was repaired and ready to go. For this particular mission, though, the javelin is the mech best suited for the job. And hey, it has jump jets. They could come in handy. Good try, Rihanna. But I'd still rather have the Centurion. Well, can't blame a girl for trying. 
she's right, you know. Well, anyway, yep, we got a fast light mech. He's not going to be hitting hard, but he's going to be running fast. So, since we have no weapons on the arms, I'm going to do a torso lock. Bam. And now, accurate firing. They do pop out of my chest, the lasers. So, that's where they're coming from. That's how they'll get their damage delivered. Basically, pointing our chest and thrusting the lasers forward. But you can bet its perimeter defenses won't be. My guess, the raiders will have turrets stationed around the perimeter. If that's the case, it means they must have a generator close by. Find and destroy that generator before assaulting the plant, and you'll have a much easier time of it. Got it. Thanks. All right, that's the plan. Find the generator, Head take it out. I'm detecting enemy units up ahead. Could be a raider patrol. These guys are really tough. They were way easier beforehand. They're going to do a lot of damage if I let them. These are just harasser units. However, any little bit to my armor is going to count. Bam. Yeah, those turrets right there, if we destroy the main generator, we won't be taking any more hits. So let's do it fast. Yeah, I like the Javelin. He is a scout mech. He's meant to go up forward real fast, not do all the heavy hitting or damage, and help out his bigger battle mech brethren. He has a role, and my right arm's already fucked up, Jesus. Alright, fast, fast, fast. Yeah, there's a lot of turrets, but there's the generator. There we go, and now that the generator's out, no more turrets. This will occur on other maps, which I think is really cool because I just found that out recently. So I'm going to be looking out for that from now on. There we go. Easy peasy. Opening battle map. Yep, we're going to go to the power station and destroy some power stuff, I'm sure. Jump jets engaged. Okay, there's a geothermal power plant up ahead. There's a number of storage buildings in and around the plant itself. I suspect that's where they're storing their loot. Oh, that's now right. We're gonna smash and grab. Builder. Once you locate the storage crate, more keep a pickup, then move on to the next building. From my initial scans, there of the it site, is. <laughs> I've moved where I think the crates could be located. Look there first. Roger that. Good work. Marks for pickup. Target acquired. Commander, it appears the derelict plant has a network of backup generators running. Destroy them if you can. Oh, come here. Target destroyed. Bang. Looks like we gotta destroy all these backup generators. That's no good. So currently I have two lasers set to one trigger and then two lasers on another. I could do it a certain way. Oh, I got someone behind me. Bam, you're dead. Uh, I could do it like this, so I can change it to go, let's see. Hang on, let me just destroy this. Okay, I could do it like, let's see. Yeah, and if I... I don't have this button bound yet. Okay, so I, I said it's a chain fire, which means if I pull the trigger once, only one of my lasers goes off. So if I fire it in rapid succession, I can have it on one trigger, but pull it as many times as I need to. That's a good way to, like, minimize any sort of multitasking procedures that you would need to do otherwise. So bam, 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 and then smack, smack. Those are my only two buttons for this thing. Yep, all the generators are being destroyed, so all the turrets are being turned off. Generators down. That's the last of their power generators. If you find the acquisition, 
Just walk up to it in order to pick it up. Okay, got it. Keep looking. Oh, well, we got enemy hostiles. Come here. Yeah. Here's the weapons okay. depot. Depot. Why is it spelt like that? Depot. Depot. I never get that. It's one of those weird English things. Like, the fact that there's four meanings for bow and bow. They're spelt the same way. So you, like, bow forward. And the bow of a ship. And then there's a bow tie as well as a bow weapon. English is stupid. Crush, crush, crush. Yeah! When you're a giant robot, I guess buildings don't really matter too much, huh? Nicely done, Commander. That should teach them a lesson. Now get to the exfil point and I'll pick you up. It's really, like I keep saying, it's hard to track with this. It requires a lot of patience. And I'm not going to say I'm a master at it. I would play MechWarrior Online with this setup, but the thing is, it's, like, competitive. Uh, so I would be just worse off objectively. I might play MechWarrior Online with this setup if I can figure it out, just for fun. Like in Quick Play or something, but... If I do want to try my best at it, I'm going to have to use mouse and keyboard because using a mouse is way more accurate. You can actually like track enemies super well. There's a lot of micro inputs that you can put in. Pick me up, Rihanna. Nice work, Commander. We were able to recover the materials we needed from that raid of cash. And Fahad has already started the repairs to the Leopard and Centurion. You've made him a very happy man, though I doubt he'll admit it. <laughs> Give him a little sucker punch before I take off. All right, we did it. And we got some salvage. Hooray. I still have to use my mouse to navigate the menu, but I mean, you know what? Fucking Thrustmaster is sick. Nice work, Commander. We were able to recover the materials we needed that from that radar cache, and Fahad has already started repairs on the Leopard and Centurion. You've made him a very... This is just literally what you said. Alright, well, cool... Cool satellite shot, but... Why'd you say that again? We have to speak to Fahad. Fahad, are you a happy man, yes or no? Hey, boss, mate. That was quite the hole you brought back. Your head is disgusting. Easy, Look at you. But don't go getting Are you supposed to be like that? I'm overworked as it is. And this shit needs a lot of loving, eh? Are you like a so cyborg? The centurion is still gonna take plenty of time to fix. But yeah, like I said, nice job out there. Your old man will be proud. Now if there's nothing else gonna get back at it, alright. Lot of work to do. Story of my life. Lot of work to do. You're such a charming personality, mate. You're such a charming personality. Let's go ahead and fix up that javelin. Uh, he didn't take any... Yeah, so his M lasers are bust, but we can just literally repair those, so we're fine. Yeah, you're all good. Actually, hang on, I'm gonna cancel that, show off what the javelin has in terms of stuff under the hood. He's got like five heat sinks, which is necessary because he's got all laser weapons. Uh, he's got four M lasers. They do like five damage a piece. And for reference, he's got like 18 armor in the right arm. So if you were to shoot four lasers at his right arm directly, it would just probably blow it off. Uh, he's got six jump jets. This is six, right? Yeah, I can count. Um, so he can get really high really fast. You know what I mean? And yeah, he's fast. There's his speed at 97. He's not the fastest mech, but you know what? He's fast enough. 
And he can dish out a little damage too, which I like. Okay, now we gotta go speak to Rihanna. So let's go give her a visit. Good work with those raiders, Commander. While you were planet side, I got word from Spears about the plan he's put in place for us. Take a listen. Rihanna, Commander. Good news. I think I can get you safely past the blockade with the aid of a local mining company. To make everything work, I'm gonna have to find you guys a recycled mercenary identification number. A new identity, essentially. Nick's Cavaliers, for all intents and purposes, no longer exists. I'll match that number to a new name of your choosing once the time comes. So, think about what you want to call yourselves. While I arrange that, you're gonna have to do a little work for the mining company in exchange for their cooperation. If things go well, they've agreed to hire you to transport some precious cargo out of the system aboard an inbound jump ship. Using the new mercenary ID and with a legitimate contract in hand, you should have no problem slipping through the blockade. I've attached the particulars to this message. I'll be in touch once you've completed the mission. Good luck. I already reviewed the information Spears sent. The mission is a straight-up protect and defend op. Seems these raiders have been harassing the mining company, among others. Stealing from them, extorting them, killing innocent civilians when their demands weren't met. I've uploaded the pertinent details into the mission briefing, so I won't repeat them here. You're good to launch any time, Commander. Roger that. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, let's go protect some miners, huh? The mining company is under attack. She'll drop us at a safe distance. Let's go defend those poor miners. Contracts. Campaign. The mining company settlement is vulnerable to enemy to raider attack, so you've got to protect it. Sorry, enemy and raiders are like synonymous in my mind, obviously. Once on the ground, head there and defend it. Should be simple in and out. Alright, and again we're gonna take some pay. Mind the weather, Commander. It'll compromise your visibility. Mm, that's right, our javelin is fucked up. So we gotta go back to the timeline and wait 16 days. Which is when the mission start will be, conveniently enough. And take off. So those raiders will wait for us. They'll just wait until we're well and well and repaired. They're they're very fair. They're a bunch of they're a fair folk, you know. Okay. Let's get in there. Let's go! Okay, Commander. We know very little about these raiders' overall strength or sheer numbers. I love that so opening. Keep a sharp lookout for enemy units on your approach to that settlement. Copy that. Jump jet fuel low. Jump jet fuel empty. The jump jets are a bit tricky in this game. You kind of have to plan for the fact that you're gonna go, f like faster a little bit while you're actually going up and that uh, it takes a little time to actually gain any sort of elevation you can make it work though you hear that helicopters looks like the raiders have already begun their attack get in there and protect those civilians I don't have enough range they only have a Effective range of 270 and I think they reach about 470 women and children here all right, here we go. Rihanna, something's interfering with my sensors. Torso lock enabled. I think the raiders have set up some sort of jamming device nearby. I'll see if I can locate it. There we go. Okay, a couple of tanks over here. SRM carrier, short range missiles. Those guys are nasty. And a scorpion tank. That's an AC five, an auto cannon five. It still hurts, but I can step on them. I'm a big robot. Watch this. Bam! <laughs> Helicopter. I can't step on those. I could try to punch them out of the air. Let's see. Uh, no. I need to do it earlier. Target 
Target down. More helicopters, I hear it. There. I hope you guys are liking the view. I really did want to do like a first person experience so that you can live vicariously through me. I think it'd be a fun perspective to see like an actual cockpit point of view. using advanced stealth in the rocks. Luckily, stealth doesn't do anything to a giant robot fist. Another SRM-20 carrier, short-range missile carrier. Short-range missiles can be really good in this game, especially if you have an overwhelming number of them. That Scorpion light tank has a machine gun and autocannon 5. Nasty little things. He's really heavily damaged for a tank. He's really heavily armored for a tank, that's what I meant to say. I'm just too excited, guys. Whew. Yeah, look at all these civilians. I, God, you are just so big compared to these things. This is one of the light mags. He's pretty short, but, like, look how big I am compared to, like, this truck. Like, imagine just being right next to that truck. I wish there were people on the ground to, like, give yourself a sense of scope and scale. But just, God, you're so huge. This is like a mining colony, so, like, people come here to work and basically live and die here. Real homely. But anyway, looks like we have to make our way further into the mountain. So let's get going. I wish they had more interesting maps like this one. It like spirals and spins and goes everywhere. Looks like our sensors are being jammed. The jamming device the radar set up is at the top of this pass, Commander. You're going to right, that was in the mission briefing earlier. Until you're able to take it out. Target acquired. Enemy scorpion. Another enemy scorpion. There is a mech game that is free called Mech Warrior Living Legends. And what's cool about it is that you can drive more than just mechs. You can drive, like, jets and tanks. And it's all viable, too. It, like, you can drive them and make a difference. I really wish they would have more combined arms features for mech games, like for Mech Warrior, Because it's... It's a really cool military, like, experience. The idea that there's, like, these gritty real mechs combined with tanks. Your sensors should have cleared up. Just a little more variety. Because yeah, I think Your the saying is variety is the seasoning of life or something like that. Yeah, I think that's how they say it. I think I'm right. I'm completely right. Fact check me if I'm wrong or right. And if I'm right, then I win. And if I'm wrong, then well, fuck you. You're an idiot. Looks like the processing facility is under attack. Ooh. See, if I try to shoot on them right now, they're too far. My lasers can't reach that far. So I gotta make some ground. I gotta make some headway. Hedgehala. Let's see how far these go. About 400. So. My lasers can touch them at about 400 meters, but they're not going to do their maximum damage. Oh, that sucks, dude. Oh, I missed that punch. Oh, well. I can't be good all the time, guys. Yeah. Let's try not to destroy any more of this facility than we have to. Target destroyed. Target 
Acquired. These pirates are terrible pilots. Target destroyed. Come on. Stop. <laughs> I love stepping on things. You know, whenever you step on a like heavily armored tank and it makes a huge explosion, it does damage your armor, but I think it's only slight. So if you look at my armor on the bottom left here, crush. Yeah, everything flashes. When something flashes, when your armor flashes, it means that there was damage on your bot. That's the most dangerous flight uh, flying machine is the Igor. He even has his own little armor, uh, his little armor things. You can shoot him in individual parts. He has four auto cannon twos, which can be pretty nasty when combined. So we shouldn't let him live for any longer. Going down. Oh, I. They, yes, they can. Yes, they can, Rihanna. Maybe they should stop whining and take up arms. I, mean, I guess they are paying me, but. Maybe they shouldn't be such whiny bitches about it, you know what I mean? Let's hope I don't destroy anything. And perfect landing, just as like, oh, well, fuck! <laughs> Try not to destroy anymore. I'm sorry. Good work, I got him. That should make the mining company happy. Yeah. I'm on my way. There you go. Money well spent, right? I'm a good mercenary. Hey, we're unknown! Yes! We're finally... We made it, boys. We're unknown. Yeah, look at all these AC-5s. These are all weapons that were scavenged from the things I killed, like tanks and stuff. So I think I'll take, like, an AC-5, an AC-2, and that'll be it. And we leveled up. I have... There are pseudo-RPG skills in this game. The top three just do extra damage with whatever weapon type you have. And the bottom three are... Reduces the amount of damage taken while you're under fire. So just damage reduction straight out. Reduces the chances of overheating whilst increasing equipment cooldown time. So that's really good if you're like into laser weapons. And increases the chance of avoiding enemy fire. So that's literally every time the AI shoots at you, it sort of like rolls the dice as to whether or not they should hit you or not. So you'll notice that they miss a lot, like almost on purpose when you look out for it. Yeah, look at this thing. Outstanding job. Those raiders were intent on shutting down the entire mining operation, and that mobile jamming tower almost put a spanner in the works. Luckily, it don't luckily it didn't, thanks to you. There's a lot of people down here that owe you their lives tonight, Commander. As for what happens now, Spears has been in touch. It seems we have one more mission to execute before the mining company will sign off on the transport contract. We need that contract as cover to get past the blockade, so we don't have much choice but to do as they ask. Come see me when you've cleaned up, and I'll give you the full rundown. Alright, I guess we cleaned up. I'm gonna put my javelin in repairs. If it's, so let me cancel this real quick. If you know that like no limbs were lost, so basically all that was damaged was my armor, you can just press the nifty repair button and bam, automatic. But all right, let's go visit Rihanna. Yeah, he's not too damaged. Run, 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 run. What do you got to say to me? Commander. It turns out the bastards who attacked us, and who have set up the blockade, are a mercenary outfit by the name of Black Inferno. Unfortunately, that's about all we know at the moment. Spears and I will try to dig up more information if we can. The time will come when we can extract some proper vengeance. But right now, we have more pressing concerns. Inferno forces are closing in on our location. That means we only have a small window in which to fulfill our obligations to the mining company and haul ass out of here. The company wants us to take down the raiders for good by destroying their base of operations. Once that's done, 
They'll arrange passage for us aboard the inbound jump ship. I've detailed the mission briefing, and it's waiting for your sign-off. You're free to launch whenever you're ready, Commander. Roger that. All right, let's get going. Hey, boss man, from what Rihanna says, the next mission's gonna be a bit of a doozy. Good thing I've got the Centurion fit as a fit on ready to go. Aye, <laughs> he typed that out. <laughs> yeah, so he's basically saying, Centurion better take it. And I will, thank you. Decades ago, this planet was the epicenter of a mining gold rush. Of course, it wasn't the gold the miners were after, but rhodium. It was boom, then bust for the companies. Which means there's a lot of abandoned infrastructure left behind. One of those mining locations is where the raiders are currently holed up. You can expect a larger enemy presence than what we saw at the power plant, Commander. You'll need to eliminate all of them and destroy as much infrastructure as possible. Our employers want these raiders put out of business for good, so give them hell. Okay. Let's do it. We've located the raiders' base of operations. Decades ago, this planet... Okay, we, we just read that, dude. We just read that. I'm going to take salvage shares for this one. Nine salvage... Well, we probably won't get much, actually. I'm just going to take the payout. And I'm going to take some damage coverage, just in case we get hurt in any sort of way. We don't have to pay for it too badly. All right, Centurion's up and running. Let's see if we can do those weapon groupings. Yeah, there's, they didn't get kept from the tutorial. That's fine. Okay. Let's go bust some shit up. Rustin. These raiders are taking down our murderers and thieves, Commander. Don't show them any mercy. Target of one. Mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's it. Come on. Exactly. I've got enemy contacts on the head, Commander. Ha! Nice. You really gotta line up your shots when you're using this little thing. Oh, looks like the leopard, the ship, actually helped me take out the helicopter. That was nice of him. Thank you, guys. It's a wonder we don't take the leopard into battle, huh? Oh well. I wouldn't be able to use my big stompy mech if that were the case anyway, so I don't care. Let's get this done. Looks like her left and right legs are already a bit damaged. But it's not too bad. Whenever it's in the yellow, your armor is mostly intact, so that's fine. As long as we have our structure or health, we should be good. Target acquired. That thing has a PPC? That's a Manticore tank. Okay, that's different. A PPC is a projected particle cannon, if I remember correctly. It's basically a mix of kinetic, so like moving, like a bullet basically. Moving damage and laser damage and it can disrupt sensors like you probably saw when it like screwed up my ui particle cannons are really dangerous in this game as you can see he probably got a hit off on my left torso there it's in the orange which means it's moderately damaged there we go Yeah, take him down. More Igors. Yeah, Igors are going to be the most dangerous flying object. They're really annoying. They're like a wasp, and uh, they hit hard. They're like a wasp. There he is. No mercy. <laughs> Go down. The explosions in this game rock. Target 
Nah, I can't. The LRMs have a minimum distance they can fire. Hang on, I see a helicopter. There you are. I do have a limited amount of ammunition. I got about 70 shots right now for my autocannon 10. And 800 long range missiles. But it's okay, because I think this is a short mission. And yeah, let's destroy the sub. Let's destroy the raiders. Their home. The place where they call home. We're going to wreck the shit out of it. Another Manticore. We gotta kill it now. There we go. Two for one. Oh, I'm missing. Nice. Alright. Fire on everything. Just destroy it. Well, bam Look how hard I'm destroying your base. It's going down by the percentile. Oh, I guess I missed my target, but I don't care because it landed on the building. Ooh, that was important, I'm guessing. That was probably what they were using to heat themselves. You, you sure about that? Looks like a tank stuck in the snow. Oh. Seems pretty, uh, hardy. Bam. Nice. I do love using LRMs because they're super easy. They're just a shoot and forget kind of weapon. No skill really in using them. Damn, you can take an auto cannon Target 10. Destroyed. Yeah, these these tanks are really tough. Hey, stop it. Let me kill you. There we go. Let me kill you. Perfect. Line it up just right. All right, we fucked up the pirate's base. Now we gotta head back. You gotta imagine being a pirate in the mech warrior world. It's probably... Don't know if I'd say fun. They gotta be really organized, cause like, Driving around mechs and vehicles and stuff like this probably isn't an easy feat, especially like maintaining them and stuff. Unknown battle mech. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Have I fought a mech yet? No, I haven't. Alright, set it and forget it. Mm, bam. What about you? You really think you can take me down? I'm a fucking behemoth, mate. And down you go. Oh, what the fuck? Enemy spider. His right leg is weakened, so I should go for it. Here, I'm just gonna walk onto him and... Ah, damn it. He's a jumper. So that's an enemy spider. Their whole thing is that they have really... They have a lot of jump jets. And they're usually just scout mechs. Exactly. Nah, I'm just gonna kill him. Thanks for the advice, though, Rihanna. 
But yeah, she's right. Like, light mechs do have their place, especially when you're working with, like, a team of people. This guy's whole intent is to get scouting information and maybe even go up behind a mech and backstab them. Backstabbing is a viable option in these mech warrior games because there's usually a lot less armor in the back because you're expecting to be taking shots in the front. However, a 1v1 with a Centurion, this guy has really bad luck. Give him a little love smack there, a little love tap. No more arms for you, what are you gonna do, buddy? Ooh, okay. He just damaged my entire front torso. One leg's out. And target down. Wasn't clean, but at least we didn't lose a compartment. Sorry, we didn't lose a limb or anything. We're about to, so let's get the fuck out of here. Alright, we earned a bit of cash. We earned a bit of scratch. Yeah, just take some AC5s and a uh, laser. Why not? That spider mech might be small, but it's also fast. Excellent work taking it out. Thanks to you, the raider forces have been all but eliminated, and their infrastructure destroyed. Best of all, I just heard back from Spears. The mining company couldn't be happier with our efforts, and have expended, expedited, expedited. That's the word. I'm smart. Don't worry. The transport contract aboard the inbound ship, jump ship. We're about to be given the second life. <laughs> We're about to be given a second life commander. Ah, the great game Second Life. Yeah, let's go play that rather than this. That's a better game. Okay, it says speak to Fahad. Hello, Fahad. Hey there, Gav. Oh, yeah, we finally Oi, got Gav. Oi, Gav. Oi, Gav. Black bloody inferno, right? Well, that's a lot of bollocks, isn't it? <laughs> you know what a black inferno is? It's bloody <laughs> That's smoke. a lot of bollocks, aye. Right. Nice chat. Gonna get back to work now. Okay. I guess that's cool. Rihanna wants to speak to me now, so later, Gov. Later, Govna. Later, I. Bra bra bra. Oi, Gov. Hi, Commander. Thanks to your efforts, the what mining the fuck is wrong with your voice? And booked his transport on a jump ship. Spears has also obtained a new mercenary ID number. Cool. So, all we need to do now is choose a new name for our merc outfits. And we're good to go. I'll leave that up to you. Once you've registered the new name, come back and see me. Will do. Will do. Thank you, Rihanna. I love you. All right, let's name our mercenary group then. I. We're gonna call it Drackey's Lackeys. All right, that's fine. I like that. Drackey's Lackeys. Cool, cool. I like that name. It's silly. It's objectively silly. You can't deny that. Okay, Commander. Everything is set for our departure. The transport contract with the mining company is a false flag Spears and I set up with their cooperation. The mining company has legally hired us to transport cargo for them. But in reality, there is no cargo. Just a destination and some very convincing paperwork. So, where are we headed? We've been asked by Spears to help him out of a jam. I think we owe him. I agree. What's he need us to do? Spears works for Interstellar Expeditions, one of the largest archaeological collectives in the Inner Sphere. They do archaeological digs and conduct research into abandoned Star League-era facilities in the pursuit of lost technology from before the Succession Wars. One of the expedition's dig sites has come under attack. A rogue mercenary group is intent on pillaging a Star League supply depot that IE uncovered on Brooklyn Prime. We're going in to help protect the site. Spears will provide more detailed information on what exactly we're facing once we arrive. For now, I've uploaded the coordinates into the nav system. Before we can launch, you need to sign off on the op and get us to the system. Roger that. All right, now we can make it out of this system. And it looks like we're going to go help some miners, excavators really, and they're looking for something called Lost Tech. And in the Battletech universe, technology has been lost to time and mankind. We don't know how to recreate it or reproduce it, so we just go off and find it instead, like a bunch of fucking idiots. 
But anyway, I'm gonna be right back. Let's uh, go ahead and travel to that little planet where the lost tech is being mined and excavated. The situation's there, Commander. The Merc outfit Spears hired us to protect at the dig site has been taking heavy losses and can't hold out for much longer. You need to get down to the surface and reinforce them before the last defenses crumble. Unfortunately, I have no idea what you're going to drop into, so you may be coming in hot. Once on the ground, the objective is simple. Stave off enemy attacks until additional reinforcements arrive. They're counting on you, Commander. Hold the line. We're gonna hold the line, ladies and gentlemen, so let's travel! So that is what makes colonizing the galaxy possible. That is a jump ship. And jump ships are run by a neutral company called Comstar. And Comstar is the only reason why we haven't been plunged into the absolute dark ages yet. And we can still drive battle mechs around. No one really attacks Comstar because they're the reason why we can get around the galaxy and we can talk to each other throughout the galaxy. The lore is weird. Someone probably could explain it better, but... I don't have any better explanation than that at the moment. They're just, it's really hard to find excuses to drive around battle mechs because battle mechs, if you could guess, realistically, even in fiction, are impractical. There's an old argument that goes anything a mech can do, a tank can do better. And I kind of subscribe to that, but let's not be Debbie Downers and paint our mechs. <laughs> you know what? I like Cheetos. <laughs> so we're going to save that as Cheetos. <laughs> and save. There we go. And we're going to apply that to all of our mechs. All two of them. <laughs> that looks pretty good. I like that. All right. Let's get out there. The objective is simple. Hold off the enemy forces until reinforcements arrive. Okay. Uh, salvage. Nine, you're not going to get much with nine salvage shares, especially if you're trying to get mechs. They usually require at least ten or more. So we're going to go for maximum pay, and we're going to go for damage coverage. Uh, I'll, I'll go salvage. I'll go salvage. Uh, there might be a good weapon or something. All right, and here... We go. Well, let me look at the paints actually again. You know what? I'm going to go to where my. Uh, I'm going to choose what my soul likes. I'm just going to do my custom drag paint job. It's very. It has very saturated colors, but I like it a lot. Uh, I like green. That's my favorite color. It's green. So we're going to just choose this. Let's go. I don't know. Let me know. Let, voice your opinions if you want me to choose the Cheeto skin or something else even. Whatever you guys say in the comments below, I will probably pick. I could care less one way or another. What I really care about in this game is the gameplay. I think it's some of the best. And thrusting forward! Friendly Blackjack, he is all kinds of fucked up. Just ahead of your current position. Unidentified friendly Jenner, who is in perfect condition, looks like they haven't been fighting. Mayday! Mayday! My Blackjack has suffered critical damage, and I am under assault by Raider forces. Please, I need backup! We'll save him. Don't worry, I'll drive these Raiders back. And don't Keep worry, I love you. We'll make it out of this, I swear. Oh, I might actually save it. That'd be interesting. Why are you guys so tough? Proceed to the dig site. Looks 
like the hostiles have launched another attack wave. All right, I protected the uh, the pilot. Roger that. On the move. You're safe, buddy. Now eject immediately. What the fuck are you doing? That's cool. I never saved him before. That's awesome. I wish they would prepare for that, but obviously they meant for him to die, I think. Good luck to you, buddy. I, if they play like the, no, I could have saved them dialogue later on, I'd be pretty happy. Damn it, when I just lose lock. How many missiles do I got? I've got 810, that's like 80 shots. I can waste them if I want to. Bam, you're dead. Bada bing bada boom. <laughs> That's, I should be talking more when I'm fighting, but I just, the combat in this game is so good, I love it. Everything about it, I just want to sit down and take in. <laughs> Did anyone else see that? Alright, no matter. It's a little dark. I might turn on night vision. Damn, trees are getting in the way. There we go. Oh, hey, it's the blackjack, I think. Where is he? There he is. You actually gonna help, buddy? SRM-20 carrier. Nasty if you get near him. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Really? Alright, well at least you got the hits on. Alright, I've played this mission before so I know there yeah, will probably be a generator somewhere. Some and I know exactly where. That's an understatement. My entire land there it is. You can even see it. It's a little like gray a box bricks. on the gray hill. Out Speaking of, of being gray, let's turn everything green. Been holding them that's not it. What is it? This? No, that's the shutdown well, button. <laughs> Fuck. I go, 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 go. There it is. Alright. Oh, okay, now it's too bright. We still need to protect this site. Copy that, but they'll be coming back soon enough. Like I said, they attack in waves, and they haven't shown any signs of letting up. Why do they attack in waves, Mr. Luan? Mr. Luan? Leon? Defensive turrets, Leon, you know. baby boy. Yeah, I set them up when they started digging. There's a turret generator close by, up on the hill. It cycled off after the third or fourth wave hit us. It's still off at the moment. You want to try cycling it back on? I'll watch your six. Yeah, let's do it. Sure thing. There you go, it's back turrets on. Are now online and active, Commander. Yeah, there's a little criticism I have for this entire fucking game. They teach you, one, you can turn on generators. And two, we're going to see it later, there's going to be repair bays, which was a mech warrior staple for, like, almost any mission. They introduce it here, but they rarely use it. I've played through the entire game pretty much, and I've only ever seen it used two other times outside of this instance. It's just, it's so bizarre to have it and not use it. I mean, what were they THINKING?! I mean, the maps could have been so much better if, like, say, you were doing, I don't know, a defense mission like this? And they provided, like, complimentary repair bays. Like, it's not that hard, just, just put the asset there. Maybe it might take a little skill to code it in, and... I, I just, I don't know. It would have gave people a lot more options, and a lot more freedom, and a lot more fun, what can I say? Regardless... It's still a pretty good game in terms of its combat. The AI could probably use a bit of work, but other than that, I mean, the destruction, it's fantastic. Yep, there's the mention of it. 
Okay. Whatever you say, Mr. Leon, you're my favorite. So, a little backstory about how I even got to this point where I like Battletech so much that I wanted to get a $200 Thrustmaster for it. I was first introduced to Battletech through a sort of pseudo parody series, like a, what's, what's it called? Like an abridged series of MechWarrior 4 Vengeance uh, called MechWarrior 4 Ramblin' with Ray. This guy, basically, a YouTuber by the name of It's Always Dawn Somewhere, takes MechWarrior 4 Vengeance and completely redoes the entire audio, including, like, sound effects and pilot voices. He voice acts the entire thing by himself, pretty much. Um, and it's... He takes the MechWarrior 4 Vengeance storyline and repurposes it as a small planetary defense against a giant corporate government, uh, galactic government. It's called like Opal Gopalmart or something like that. Basically means giant bloated company. But that was my first introduction to Battletech. I didn't even realize Battletech was like a property. I thought it was just a generic mech game. I mean, I guess it kind of is, right? Because they stole designs from like the Japanese in the early 80s or whatever. But besides the point, besides that, it's basically its own setting, like its own proper setting. But that was my first introduction, and I have a really big soft spot for that series, because it was super entertaining. They had like, the whole appeal to me really wasn't the mechs. I mean, it's fun, but like those games are a little too old for my taste. I'm sort of a zoomer in that regard. It was the, the characters' interactions with each other, they had a constant dialogue, and they had, like, witty banter between them. And I love the how the story develops, because the basic concept is... The basic premise of the story is... A queen of a planet basically has to take over... Yeah, yeah, shut up, Leon. Uh, a queen of a planet has to take it into her own hands to liberate herself and the planet from a oppressive, uncaring company, organization. And it's just, the characters are really good fun. You guys should go check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description. The thing that got me into Battletech was basically something Battletech adjacent. But uh, the reason why I like Battletech now is because I really like the design. There was some guy who described it as... Yeah, 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 Leon. Uh, there was some guy... Not some guy. There's a YouTuber who described it as... Like, if Tonka bought a mech factory, they don't look stylized or, like, sleek or anything like in Gundam. They look like that they're well-worn machines that have seen a lot of use and are still being used. It's sort of a gritty, grounded... Uh, depiction of what a mech would be. And I really like that. That's like, I really like the realism uh, aesthetic of it. I swear, these Star League ruins bring nothing but trouble. Alright, here's the repair bay. Alright, let's repair. System offline. There we go. See? I'm all better now. All fixed up. In a jiffy. Maybe Fahad can use those to his advantage. But yeah, like I said, like... The setting's pretty good. I especially like how... Okay, Leon. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, like, uh, well, like what I was about to say, there are different sizes of mechs. They all have their special place in, on the battlefield. They all have different, like, I love that each mech has a purpose intended for it. Like, it's a weapon of war, and it has designs to it that make it excel at a certain role. 
The mechs used to be really bland and samey, but they all have like distinctive looks about them, and they all fill different battlefield Even roles. In the unlikely event that they do find a data core, I'll put C bills down that it's either destroyed, corrupted, or heavily encrypted. Yeah, probably. Enemy dropship approaching, Commander. Looks like they're bringing in the heavy guns. But yeah, that's BattleTech is. I really like it. It's a good series. I love the aesthetic. Especially the modern aesthetic. I didn't like it before, especially not in like Mech Warrior 4 or below. I just think their designs are a bit too bland. But that's just me. I like what it is now. I like what it turned into. Anyway, enemy Griffin, he's got two weapons, an LRM-10 and a PPC. We're gonna see if we can't get rid of that PPC ASAP, because that's a really dangerous tool for him to have. Let's see if we can close the gap and uh, punch it off. There you go. Yeah, no more PPC for you. All right, now I'm gonna focus on the assassin. He's probably more dangerous than the Griffin. The Griffin's probably not going to use his LRMs. He's probably pissed at me for <laughs> jabbing his PPC off. So we're just going to run away. He has just about the same speed as me, so I can outrun him pretty well. Well, not really outrun him, but he doesn't have anything that will really harm me. Because I took that away from him. I'm going to go for the Assassin's Legs, just because it's more humiliating, funny. Ooh, an ammo explosion happened. That's no good. Damn it. All right, I need to slow down, turn faster, go forward. I just lost my left torso. All right, this is getting kind of bad. Damn it. All right. I think I lost a heat sink too because I'm overheating like crazy. Come on. Bust one of your legs. I busted an arm. Oh, no, this is bad. I can't fail, not here. Please. Urgh! I'm gonna punch your fucking leg off. <laughs> Smacked ya. Oh, they must have taken care of the Griffin while I was away. Did they? Checking battle map. Oh, there he is. I don't get him on scope for some reason. Looks like his back's been flayed, and I don't have my LRMs, because that was in my left torso. You see, I got damaged uh, on the left torso, so I lost a weapon, just like the Griffin did. The design of this game is really good, honestly. It's really engaging. You have to, like, think on your feet whenever things go south for you or your enemy. Playing this against other people can could be really fun. I still gotta defend the base, don't I? Firing live rounds off into it. Come on. Look at me. He lost his left front torso. Well, his left torso, just in general. He's still got some front armor, which is good for him, but uh, problematic for me. And if I can stop missing my shots, that'd be great. His center torso is almost in the red. It is in the red. It's about to pop. Come on. Ugh, am I really missing that badly? There we go. Killing blow. Bam. Spears will be impressed, as he should be. A new Merc outfit is already on his way to secure the site. Hang tight for now. I'm coming to pick you up. Oh, I saved the blackjack in the end. Hey. Hey, Commander. Just wanted to say thanks for the rescue. Things were getting pretty That's Mr. Leon talking up. in that mech. I lost some good friends today. Good pilots. I don't think I could have held out much longer myself if you hadn't dropped in. I appreciate it. I'm glad we were able to help. Just wish we'd gotten here sooner. Me too. You know, we could always use another pilot. One with your skills, he'd come in awful handy. What do you think? After today? Hell, it'd be an honor to serve with you, Commander. Then consider it done. Welcome aboard. Alright. 
And now we get the start of cooperative play. But yeah, as you can see, the Thrustmaster, I mean, I think it's really fun. And we reach the rank of Unfamiliar. We got a light mech, a Jenner. The Jenner is really interesting. I'll talk about them later. Well, really interesting. More so, I think it's interesting. I think it's a really fun mech to have. Not the best, but it's something. And something ain't nothing. Yeah, that's going to cost a lot. Good thing I I didn't take the damage coverage, did I? Fuck. That was some fly commander, and I see you also managed to pick us up a new pilot. Nice work. Having another pilot aboard will certainly help our cause. He's a bit worse for wear at the moment, but that's not surprising, especially considering what he's been through. Don't worry, though. I'll make sure he gets settled in. As for the dig site, it's been secured and the newly arrived reinforcements should ensure its continued protection. When you've had a chance to clean up, come and see me on the bridge. We need to talk about the future. And we got Mr. Leon Freeman, Lieutenant Leon Freeman. He's got really good starting skills. So if we can rank him up, he can be a really, really good pilot. But let's speak to Rihanna. Well, okay, first let's put in a repair order. So there's the Jenner. That was the friendly mech that was helping us. I think he comes perfectly conditioned. Yes, he does. Like the Javelin, he comes with four medium lasers, but he also has a short-range missile, SRM, uh, silo that he can shoot from, which is pretty cool. Let's get that Centurion repaired. We lost an entire melee arm, which is no good. So let's fix him up. Yeah, okay, so everything on the left torso got destroyed. The LRM ammo, the heatsink, the LRM-10, everything. So, if I press the repair all button and we do have this stuff in stock, we should be able to replace it easy peasy. Looks like we had everything. But as you can see, the LRM-10 sh uh, stream got replaced, it got used, and got put into there. So I was careless, I paid for it. But we're back in business as soon as this guy gets fixed up, which should be more than 21 days because of a conflict penalty. 28 days. It takes an entire month to repair that amount of damage, but it's going to go past us like the blink of an eye. And you're being fixed up. Let's get you in the new paint job, eh, Mr. Jenner? Mr. Jenner in the drag job. Apply. It's okay. I like the green. Green's my favorite color. You know, someone told me that green is not a creative color, and I told them to go fuck themselves. But then they started to uh, melt into black ink, so that was kind of awkward. Hi, Commander. Excellent work protecting that dig site. Spears thinks you did a hell of a job. A chip off the old block were his exact words. Referring to your father, of course. That's quite the compliment coming from him. As you know, your father and Spears did a lot of work together over the years. Proved quite lucrative, too. For both of them. Hopefully... We can continue that relationship. Let's hope so. Let's hope we so. We need more than one client yeah, if we're going to survive so. out here. That's what I wanted to talk with you about. Our next move. We're operating with a clean slate now, thanks to the new mercenary ID number Spears provided. A whole new name, new outfit. Now we need to get to work rebuilding our capabilities and establishing our reputation. Won't be easy, but nothing worth doing ever is. You up for it? What do you think? I think we better get started then. What do you think? Plenty of war zones in the inner sphere where we can pick up work. A few safe harbors as well. Places we can hire more pilots, get our hands on cheap supplies. First, we need to earn some sea bills to pay for it all. Other than that, I see a bright future ahead of us, Commander. Me too. Speaking of the future, we have a pending transmission from IE already. Seems Spears has put the word out to his colleagues that we can be trusted to get the job done. Before diving right in, I recommend we head to one of the industrial hubs in this region. Pockets of relative stability where we can acquire new equipment and mechs, hire new pilots. We have more mechs than mech warriors at the moment, so it would be good to expand the ranks. Repairs are cheaper in these regions too. Either way, I'd mark the location of the IE contract on the star map. It's there whenever you're ready. 
Roger that. Thanks, Rihanna. You're welcome, Commander. You know, I when I completed this game, I basically skipped through all the dialogue. I didn't realize they actually advise you to go to an industrial hub, like, straight off the bat. That would have actually been... That would have been really helpful my first time around. But, uh, I learned it the hard way. Yep. Cooperative campaigns are unlocked. I'm pretty sure Rihanna's not saying this to me. Alright, this, I think, is the Heroes of the Inner Sphere DLC. Uh, I'm not going to read all this, but basically we can unlock the cantina, which will help us get us mech upgrades, uh, when we do specific jobs for like rugged individuals. You can read this, pause it if you want, but I'm just going to accept it and go along. Okay. Now this is actually a part of the story. So I'm going to read this, the main campaign, if you will. The local systems are in shambles. Many mercenary outfits are packing up and running, while others are looking to ransack vacant mercenary bases. Vacant. With only a few battle mechs to your name, it seems you'll be in need of some hardware and supplies if you want to stay in the game. My clients need supplies too, and if you get your hands on some, I'll give you a healthy cut of the resale value. That should help get you back on your feet after, well, after everything you've been through around here. Erm. Um, if you're game, I've got intel on a system where an independent company from Harlock's Warriors is trying to get out of the system for good. If you're not afraid to shoot at other mechs, you should be able to chase them off and acquire some of their supplies. The surefire way to chase them off with minimal fuss is to shoot down the mechs of Anders William, their head of security, and then the rest of the outfit should scatter. Williams is not well liked, say to say the least. So you'd essentially be doing the warriors a favor. And with the occupants on their way out anyway, they shouldn't be that much of a fight to protect someone they'd rather be rid of. After chasing off the warriors, I'll send in my crews and pay you for anything that's on my list of necess necessaries. Anything else you find will be yours for the taking. Okay, a couple of mystery rewards and some pay. You know what? Let's do it. <laughs> right. So this is the star map. Now we can go to anywhere in the galaxy. Look at this. And you know what they say, the classic saying, no guts, no galaxy. So let's get some guts. So that's the story mission. That's an assassination mission. Over here, you're going to think, well, no, you're not going to think. I'm going to think. I'm going to think that this is an industrial sector, baby. This is where we get those mechs and pilots. So currently we have, let's see, me and Leon, and we have three mechs. So like it was stated before, we gotta get some more mechs. Sorry, we gotta get some more pilots. I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Uh, we started in DeBerry, we <laughs> wound up in Brooklyn, and now we're just gonna jump to, uh, to Haynesville and see what's going on there. I th we can jump there, right? Yeah, there we go. I have to actually click on the name, it looks like. But okay, we're going to continue this later. But for now, thank you guys for watching. And hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Bye bye